There's nothing like the first time. Your first published novel, your first prom, your first telekinetic murder spree, whatever. In the case of the 1974 novel Carrie, it was Stephen King's first ever published work, and it was also the first of his published works to reach the silver screen when Brian De Palma turned it into a 1976 horror classic. In the film, Sissy Spacek plays an extremely shy and sheltered high school girl who's bullied relentlessly at home and school. At home, her mother is a complete and total nutbar salad who has weaponized her religious beliefs against her daughter. She locks her in the closet with this little coked out Jesus statue and has for all intents and purposes ruined her chance at a normal life. One day at school, Carrie gets her period for the first time. Because she's been neglected at home, the poor girl has no idea what's happening to her. She, after an alarmingly odd shower sequence, freaks out and starts begging for help, rubbing her blood all over the other girls. Which, to be fair, is super gross, but she didn't know any better. The other girls then start to laugh at her and throw tampons and pads at her while chanting, Plug it up! Basically your average Philadelphia Eagles visiting section experience. In the end, these breathtakingly mean kids take it one step too far. She's voted prom queen only to have a bucket of pig blood dumped on her head on the stage in front of everyone. Naturally, she freaks the fuck out and uses her newfound telekinesis powers to lock everyone in the school before taking her revenge in one glorious bloodbath. And you thought Diddy's parties were bad. It's too soon. The Carrie freak off moment the Carrie Freakout moment has become a staple of the movie and would have shockingly become an entire franchise. Four movies, from the original classic to one of the worst horror sequels that has ever existed in life, to a 2002 made-for-TV remake, and finally a 2013 remake starring Chloe Grace Moretz as Carrie, for some reason. So today on Best of the Bad Guys, where we celebrate cinema's worst villains, we're going to take a look at each one of these movies, Carrie Freakouts, and pick them apart. So break out your dirty pillows, because we're starting with the first one, the classic one, the best one, 1976's Carrie. When the bucket of pig blood finally unleashes upon Carrie in the final act, it's almost a relief for the audience. This because the tension leading up to it was almost excruciating, as De Palma slowly unraveled the inevitable. Complete with those extremely uncomfortably up-close shots of Nancy Allen licking her lips. The tension keeps simmering post-literal bloodbath as we're forced to be a party to the inner workings of Carrie's brain breaking down like a Timu bought toaster oven. Finally, she flashes the best crazy eyes in the business, and the masterclass in filmmaking begins. It is undeniable that the original is not only the best overall of the freakout scenes, but it is the most expertly crafted from behind the camera. We're treated to a split screenshot where we can both see Carrie direct her symphony of death from the stage and witness the violence in real time. As the door shut, that one escalating note from the score screeches out. The lights turn bright red, and the aura is unmatched. It's a truly frightening moment where all these little shits have poked the bear one too many times, and you can literally feel the ground cracking beneath your feet. Pandemonium ensues, the score dances with the technical sounds of electrical mayhem, and the gym teacher is doing what she loves most, striking kids in the face. Out of love. The fire hose that comes to life has a snake-like creepiness to it, and cruelly sprays Norma in the face continuously after she stopped responding. She does not see anything she likes. The gym teacher gets it here when the structure from a ceiling snaps and violently strikes her midsection. Multiple folks are electrocuted and finally the stage is lit up in flames. Carrie's walkout moment here, like most moments in the original, was far and away more frightening than anything that would come after. The way she almost floats out of the school doors is haunting. It goes without saying, this is the best one of them all. But they all do have their merits. No, really. Come on. But first, stop by the Joe Blow merch store to check out this mug that says, F*** you. Pay me. Before we continue with our video, here's a reminder to click the store tab on any of our Joe Blow channels and browse our collection of the latest and freshest designs in our merch store. Go get you some. Next up, 1999's Carrie 2, The Rage. The Rage, Michael. In a shocking move of Hollywood restraint, this franchise sat dormant for 22 years after the original film. That until an unproduced script called The Curse came out, which they reformulated 10 Cloverfield Lane style to match a Carrie sequel. The story was different, but it all ended the same. A teenage girl with kinetic abilities was bullied to the brink before she went berserker style on a bunch of assholes, this time at a party not unlike the one Stu Mocker threw in Scream. When Mark, who I swear to God looks just like the third Dylan brother, but isn't, and the Home Improvement Kids show a video of Rachel losing her virginity on their Buffalo Wild Wings sized monitors for everyone to see, she finally snaps. And believe me, we were all rooting for her at this point. For some dumb reason, Rachel's heart tattoo begins to beat and spreads across her body as she makes I have to use the bathroom face before the room comes crashing down. Chandeliers fall, glass goes flying, and heads literally roll. As the massacre unfolds, you have to give credit to this sweet double impalement with the fire poker. Then she goes full Hellraiser 3 and starts firing CDs at everyone. 
Because the 90s, bro. Rachel sets Mark Wahlberg's pool house on fire as Finch from American Pie looks on in his bucket hat, and things haven't even begun to get stupid yet. The kids collect weapons to fight her with as she stands there like an idiot in the living room. The camera inexplicably goes into black and white mode, and you know her eyes are getting tired from her holding them open like that this entire time. And we finally make our way to the pool where she telekinetically explodes the eyeballs of the girl holding the spear gun. The victim, and here's the best part, turns around and fires it, double kill style through Tim the Toolman's son's man bits. <laughs> Outstanding. Finally, the last bad guy dies by drowning after being too stupid to duck a pool cover and blinks himself to death in the water. Then the mom shows up, and you know what? Who cares? This is atrocious. It does have the best Jason Voorhees-esque style kills in it, even though it's not even technically Carrie. Her name's Rachel. I don't... Who gives a... Moving on, Carrie 2002. In 2002, Brian Fuller penned a television reimagining of the original film starring Angela Bettis, who a lot of you will remember from the movie May, which she was so awesome in. This would end in mostly the same way, but would incorporate more ideas from the original novel, such as the telling of the story through the POV of the townsfolk and the added emphasis on Carrie burning the entire town down. It would though tack on an ending where Carrie survives, goes missing, so that the studio NBC could make a TV series on the back of the made-for-TV movie. This never happened. If you're wondering what the same Carrie freakout scene in 1976 looks like in 2002 with the new technologies the world has to offer, don't. I understand we're dealing with a made-for-TV movie, but what in the Langolier special effects quality level ass is going on here? I do love this guy who will not stop making that face and how he gets his arms stuck in the doors as she shuts them, but nothing can save us from these quick camera cuts and Windows Movie Studio 2001 effects. Some weird Halloween 6 score style guitar squeals here and <laughs> and oh my god she murdered that girl with a basketball goal. Fantastic idea, inexcusable execution. This was 2002. Why does all this look like a 1997 CD-ROM game? They didn't even bother putting a net on it, for God's sake. I also do enjoy that this little tiny film decided, fuck it, we're gonna show it all. $12 budget or not, these are absolutely atrocious looking scenes, but the willingness to go for it and show the whole scope of the city burning in a way none of the other films did is respectable. I also love the Night of the Twisters vibe in all these downtown scenes. Look at some of the graphics in these shots. I mean, that is hilarious. Now, in 2013, we remade Carrie again, even though there's a perfectly good version of it right there on home video. I digress. The main differences are an opening shot of the home birth of Carrie, which is actually pretty messed up, and an ending that goes full-on Final Destination-style 2000 slock. The film has the gall to ask us to believe that Chloe Grace Moretz was the ugly duckling of her high school. It also asks Julianne Moore to do a straight-up impression of one of the most amazingly awkward performances of all time in Piper Laurie's Margaret White. The main freakout of 2013 starts as unimpressively as you'd expect. We have to deal with this awkward Ansel Egghort line delivery that has the intensity of someone whose mom bought the wrong kind of Lunchables. What the hell? You know I hate turkey, mom. God! The film removes its moral ambiguity by cutting the gray area from some of the high schoolers. Tommy was generally a good guy and it's his death that sets Carrie off. But the thing that really sets the film apart is what comes next, when Carrie snaps and goes full on ghost ship opening sequence. She throws her kinetic weight at the crowd with such a force that they go bowling over in hilarious fashion. The moment is capped off by an amazingly stupid and fun shot of a teen flying face first into a door that doubles as the camera lens. <laughs> It's no De Palma, but I'll be goddamned if it doesn't tickle you a little bit. This is one of those moments where you remember Carrie was a real 3D, 3D, and IMAX release at the time. Because when you think of 3D, you think of Carrie. Maybe in the fourth remake, they'll develop a technology that has them throwing tampons at the audience. Why the fuck not? Actually, one of the best scenes of all the Carrie freakouts belongs to 2013, when Carrie does a quick Your Soul Is Mine to a runaway and chomps his ass up in the moving bleachers. Excellent death, original, no notes. We also see some twins get focused on as they're trampled to death with a high heel twist. And Carrie again eschews the original film's moral ambiguity by sparing the gym teacher before literally superhero flying away. Just her creepily floating out there wasn't enough. Harder, faster, faster, dumber. Our most obnoxiously hateable Billy and Chris of all the films sit in their car having another stupid conversation between the American Horror Story rejects when Carrie finds them. Personally, I'll take the quick and creepy choppy style death and camera work of the original, but some will find more joy in watching Billy get literally wrecked in slow motion here. Not to mention the slow motion shot we get of left in the oven too long Lindsay Lohan face planting into the windshield. It's a weirdly cut off shot, but it's still satisfying. Nonetheless, 
I'll leave it to you folks. Which death did you enjoy better? Comment down below. Billy and Chris in the original or here in 2013? To give each film its final flowers, I'd say that the 2013 film does have some fun mid-2000s level kills in it. I will say that the 2002 remake at least goes a little tighter to what the book did. And the second one is at least one of the worst sequels of all time. And the original is just the best of everything. From the acting to the cinematography to the everything. Oh, even the scariest Jesus statue. Look at that thing. Good God, that's horrifying. Well, it's time for us to plug it up finally. I hope you guys enjoyed this and make sure to check out our other Best of the Bad Guys videos from Freddy Krueger to Damian Thorne. Hope you guys have an awesome day.